Is Loki's glorious purpose to bore me to death? Ah, uh, yes, friends. This is Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I am here to tell you as to why Loki is trash. I am a big fan of Tom Hiddleston, and I think that giving Loki a series was a really clever idea. I was all aboard, and now I've seen three episodes, and I don't know about you, but <clears throat> this thing stinks. I'm going to tell you why, because you probably don't know it yet. You suspect it in the back of your mind, but you haven't quite gotten there, and we're going to discuss it. So I have a couple of points I'm going to make. The first, and this one is probably the flimsiest for, for my arguments, is that Luke, they seem to, who, the writers, and I'll get to the writers in a second, seem to have forgotten that Loki has powers and he seems to have forgotten how to use them. Now, if you recall in the original Avengers movies, you'll see Loki and he, ta he already enchants people and takes over their minds. He's demonstrated this numerous, numerous times. Now, the argument against this is that he had uh, the scepter and the Mind Stone at the time, so that enhanced his powers, but you would think that the one variant of Loki would already know, like, he should know how to do that. I don't know how one variant can teach themselves how to do it when our Loki has been doing it forever and, and we just can't seem to get that. And this is where I'm going to talk about uh, the writers. So let's talk a little bit about the writers of this show. You probably didn't know this, but the writer, she's a, uh, and nothing wrong with her other than the fact that she just doesn't have any experience. Listed as one of Forbes' top 30 under 30, BBC hot new talent list, a huge comedy voice in the years to come, not currently. She's known for, and let's take a look at this, shows I've never heard of. Sex Education, 5x5, five five. and let's just see how many years she's been doing this. So she's been doing shorts and really actually only had any TV work in 2017. So it's not like she's some long running uh, person who's a you know director of doing a lot of stuff here. She's actually only got limited credits. I don't know why they would hand a flagship over to her. Uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't think the show is all that funny. I mean, did you laugh during the the apocalypse salad discussion? I mean, it's hilarious for Loki to just go like this for hours and tell me a story that he himself says this is a terrible analogy. Um, Loki just, it doesn't seem like these people who are writing this are fans of Loki or the show or the Avengers or, you know, the 10 years of Marvel history that happened but right before this. You know, Loki seems to have forgotten. He sees one clip of his mom dying and then he keeps repeating, like, that his mom's dead, that she's gone. He didn't watch her die. Like, that hasn't happened yet. I thought his whole premise was so that he could take over the time variance and then change history so that his mom doesn't die and so that he doesn't die. Isn't that why he wants to overthrow them? That would be my assumption. I don't know what your assumption is, but she ain't dead yet, and he seems to have forgotten why he wants to do that. The other thing that I want to mention that connects to this, this particular writer is every single episode has them talking about the, drinking, sitting down, having a conversation, talking about their feelings in some way. The first episode had it when Owen Wilson, being Owen Wilson, gets to talk about a soda, that they're they're going back and forth about a, a soda. The second one, they're talking over the salad where they're discussing how, you know, how do they feel about their riding jet skis together off into the sunset. The most recent episode, they set it up so that Loki can talk about him being bisexual for no reason. They don't show it. They don't. They just tell you in, you know, exposition dump as they drink together sitting closely at a table. Did you notice, if you think about this, have you ever seen any more than two people talk to each other in the entire show? It's usually Owen Wilson and Loki or Loki and female Loki and Loki and just one other guy. You know what other show did that towards the end? That was a complete failure. 
Game of Thrones. Go back and watch season eight of Game of Thrones, and it was always two people talking to each other in a room, having a conversation, walking and talking, eating and talking, talking and talking. Very rarely are there complex conversations with more than two people in the room. Um, let's. The, the final point that I'm going to make, because I'm here to try to prove to you that, that Loki is trash, and, and hopefully this will also occur to you. First of all, I want to say there are other people who have done uh, better videos than mine. Uh, I would say check out the Internet Janitor. He tells you about how Loki is just a ripoff of Rick and Morty, that they've copied a, you know, a show from several years ago where they just copied the Rick... You know the 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 citadel of ricks he shows there's you know it's not an exact copy but they're definitely taking some license with it and then uh if you check out as from heels versus babyface he also explains to you why the show is incredibly boring and he'll break down every single episode and and how it looks but three episodes in i'm already i'm very like this is a i'm bored to tears and b i have no hope that this is going to end up good so that gives you like a multitude of shows coming from Marvel that are either poorly directed or something's going wrong. I kind of liked WandaVision, Falcon and Winter, Sol Winter Soldier, what a trash dumpster fire. And now Loki, a great, great character. Tom Hiddleston acting his brains out to keep this thing relevant, just being put off to the side. But here's what I want to show you, and uh, I, I, I can already predict what's going to happen in the next episode. They're going to get captured by the time variant because... Because if you notice at the end of the third episode, they're completely, they're, they're going to be stuck on Lamentus 1. Did you know that the very last three minutes and five seconds was a one shot, one camera take, and yet not a single person on the internet, not one person that I've read numerous reviews, watched numerous things, has noticed that there was a one shot at the end of it because it just was not that exciting or relevant. They're escaping from... Um, you know, Lamentus is falling apart or the moon is falling apart. It's coming down. It's going to crush everything. And it was all done in one take. Now, do you remember Daredevil? Do you remember when in the first season they had the hallway scene, the one-shot hallway fight that everybody was jaw-dropped and said, this is one of the greatest things we've ever seen from Marvel, a three-minute single shot? And how I got so much publicity, no, so many people talking about it. And then they tried to outdo themselves in season three with a 10 minute prison break scene. That was also fantastic, done in one shot. Now, I, I, I say this to you because as a fan of, of, of these previous Marvel pieces, especially Daredevil, why is it no one realized it? Not again, I, I had to go back and time it just to make sure because it was like, oh, that's a one shot. And it was three minutes and five seconds of nothing. Not that exciting. And no one talked about it. Go back and watch. See for yourself. Now, it's clearly it looks stitched together because they use a bunch of CGI. And maybe they're covering up for poor directors or obviously inexperienced showrunners. You would think the Marvel machine would know how to take care of these kind of things. Or at least build some excitement for it. But nobody talked about it kind of makes you say hmm so anyway again loki is trash i am not excited about the rest of this i hope you come to realize that it's trash too and it's not I, look i'm not going after it from a political bent necessarily i'm just saying it's you know done from an inexperienced showrunner done by writers who are copying other things and it's incredibly boring for a show that has one of the most compelling actors uh you would think they could do better with that so that's my take. Again, I'm Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You. You can catch us on 7.30 Eastern Standard Time for our live podcast that we do release on Stitcher, Potif Spotify, Potify, <laughs> iTunes, all those other great places. Catch us on Instagram if you want to chat with us. And um, I'm already on to the next one. Ah.